Somewhere in the North Atlantic, the protective forces of an Allied convoy battles the elements. As proud as the Union Jack flying from its mast, this shepherd of the sea zigzags through the turbulent waters, bringing to America a strange cargo, paid for with tears, pain, and human life. A cargo of Nazi prisoners of war. Ironical though it seems, these men are protected by their enemy, but exposed to the dangers of annihilation by their own countrymen. For lurking in the shadows of the seas is a Nazi submarine, waiting, watching, ready to strike. Within the German sub, the men at the torpedo tube stand in readiness. Carefully, the captain sights the position of the convoy. A word of command. Then stealthily, and with sinister swiftness, the torpedo slides through the water. Nazi to die at the hand of Nazi. This is but one of the many strange fortunes of war. Das Trinken. Dankeschön. You speak German. Yet you wear an English uniform. further instructions. All prisoners of war will be assigned quarters and will be handled in accordance with laws and usages of war, unless otherwise indicated. And is this yours? Thanks. Under the laws of war, Why don't you wear it? It's not mine. It belongs to Richter of the Elite Guard. He was drowned when a warship struck our life raft. Fall out! Hello, Cy. Hello, Hello Tom. Oh, uh... Look, chum, a dollar for your turn. Hey, back of the line, Bob. Back with a hoi polloi. Hey, Sarge, what's the idea? Listen, pal, it's a matter of life and birth. I'm anxious. I gotta know whether it's a boy or a girl. What's the difference? It'll be one or the other. Thanks, pal. I'll name the boy after you. Say, what's your name? Nowakowski. Wonderful. 
Say, how do you spell that name? N-O-W-A. Write it out and give me a nickel to make it legal. Thanks. Hey, that guy ain't married. He didn't say he was, sucker. He just said he was anxious. Is this the Reynolds Army Hospital? Miss Mary Lee Norris, please. She's a nurse's aide. Yes, ma'am, it's very important. This is Sergeant Hunter speaking. Oh, hello, Terry. <laughs> hello? Mary Lee, it's Terry. Terry, darling. Oh, it's so wonderful to hear your voice. Are you all right? Can I see you tonight? Oh, I'm afraid not. I've got to stay with my patient. Patient? I hate him. All he's got to do is lie there and gaze into those limpid eyes while I suffer with a heart condition. <laughs> Stop it, Terry. You should be glad you're not in his condition. He's a mental case. Yes, I know you are, too, but you were born that way. Now, suppose you call me later. I've got to hang up. Oh, don't hang up. I've got to leave tonight. I've got to pick up another load of prisoners. Hey, ain't you a father yet? How's your mother? Fine. And your father? He's fine. And your kid brother? <laughs> He's fine, too. And the crops, how are they doing? Failing, like your humor. <laughs> Goodbye. That was Terry. I'm sorry I was called away, Dr. Spencer. He seems to be talking about some place in England. Well, as nearly as I can make out this morning, he was muttering in French and German. Have you uh, noticed any change in that arm? No, sir. It seems to be the same as it was when he was brought in. Mm. Now, uh, about this important telephone call you just received. <laughs> well, I told him I had to remain on duty. Well, he's not going to need any special care. Perhaps your young man does. Nick Schiessen, comrade. Nick Schiessen. Tell him never to do that again. Okay. If he loses the ball, call one of the guards. Save me, sir. The vacuum rules from the other side. They shall, sir. You know me? Of course. You're Private Krause of the 1st Panzer Division, of Talon 12. Jawohl, Herr. Herr Gruppenführer Ludke, of the Gestapo. You were in Italy when we were. That's right. Wasn't Corporal Karl Richter attached to your Abteilung? Jawohl, Herr Gruppenführer. Where is Richter now? He was drowned. Poor Richter. Drowning was too good for him. You will tell me later the details about Richter. That's all. Zu Befehl, Herr Gruppenführer. Sieg heil. Sieg heil. Sorry, boys. Time to break it up. Hi, Forest Nightingale. Hello. Well, if it ain't my favorite pinup girl, how about taking my temperature? Hello, sweet. Now, you know you haven't had a temperature for days. Well, you haven't been that close to me for days. <laughs> You're too infectious. 
Oh, don't stop, Mr. Cheever. It's beautiful. You know, you seem able to get more music out of a piano with one hand than I can with two. I hear you're going to give a music hall yourself. Well, I'm afraid it'll sound rather crude compared to you. You see, there are no advanced teachers in a small community like this. I wish I might teach you, Miss Norris. Well, I'd like to take you up on that. You're the least trouble of all my patients. Well, all right. It's a good thing you caught it. Well, you almost raised that arm. Almost isn't quite enough. The doctors say you must keep trying. Like that? Now, no talking, please. Cheever. Here's a man you'll be mighty glad to meet. This is Mr. McDowell, the British consul from Norfolk. How do you do, Cheever? Huh? How do you do, sir? A bit of a spot you're in. I hopped right down the minute I received word. It's very kind of you to trouble, sir. No trouble at all, old fellow. It's part of my job. Well, I see you're very well taken care of. <laughs> I am, sir. What's his status, Major? Well, he's obviously in no condition to go back into active service. He needs further treatment on that arm. If you haven't room, can't we find him a flat or some other accommodation here in town? Perhaps Miss Norris can make some suggestion. Well, uh, the town is rather crowded. Yes, yes, I can well imagine. Norfolk is jammed, too. But don't you worry about it, Cheever, old chap. I'm sure Miss Norris will be kind enough to see what's available. Uh, my government will, of course, defray all expenses. Now, is there anything I can do for you? Your family have already been notified of your rescue. Or oh, perhaps a letter. Uh, uh, don't trouble, sir. I'll write to Mother myself. I'll dictate to Miss Norris. Just as you say. Well, keep me advised, and if there's anything you want at all, sing out. Thank you, sir. Oh, goodbye. Goodbye, sir. And good luck. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. Now, about those lessons that... First class Schultz of the Yankee Rangers. His old man runs a hardware store. Oh, the camouflage had me fooled for a minute. I gotta go home now. Okay, so long. Bye. Bye. Come on, Will. Hello, Terry. <laughs> Glad to see you. Hello, folks. <laughs> Missed you all week. Good evening, Terry. Willie, how many times have I told you not to point that gun? Say, don't you think I better lock this dangerous guy up in the prison camp? Oh, I'd bust out. Not from our camp, you wouldn't. Say, uh, where is everybody? She's inside. Go right in. Is, uh, that Mary Lee playing? Yeah, she's all hepped up since we took in that water. He's a convalescent from the hospital. They're so overcrowded. Oh, he's a stuffed shirt. No, no, my dear girl, that's vile. <sighs> I'm afraid I'm too tired. Nonsense. Try again. Is he a music teacher? Oh, he thinks he's the answer to the family prayers. Cruel Jews. No, no, can't you read? See that? Stupid. <laughs> I'm sorry, Ronnie. Let's try it again. Hmm? Hello, Marilee. Terry. It's well to see you, darling. Oh, you look wonderful. Um, I'd like you to meet Mr. Ronald Cheever. He's staying with us until he can go back on duty again. Ronnie, this is Terry Hunter. Hello, Hi. Hunter. Oh, pardon me. For the time <laughs> being, I'm left-handed. Say, aren't you the Englishman who was picked up by the Coast Guard off that torpedo prison transport? Yes, why? Oh, nothing. Some of your fellow travelers are in our camp. Travelers? Yes, the prisoners that were on your ship. Uh, Terry's with the military police detail at the prisoner of war camp. Oh, I see. Is it nearby? Just a few miles. 
Some of those honeys were pretty burned up about being torpedoed by their own sub. Fortunes of war, you know. Yeah. I'd like to see some of those blighters. Sure, any... It's nine o'clock. <laughs> Willie? Oh, bug juice. <laughs> well, nurse, is it my bedtime, too? Well, I'm sure you must be tired after our strenuous music lesson. Naturally. Cheerio, Hunter. Good night. Thanks, Ronnie, for the lesson. My pleasure. Long time for this, darling. Queer duck, isn't he? Oh, he's really quite nice. I rather like him. Uh oh. So that's the way it is, huh? Oh, don't be silly. He's only helping me with my music. And it's just the music? Not entirely. Major Spencer wanted him close to the hospital. So he so... sent him here? No, he didn't. As a matter of fact, I invited him. And it was you. Well, certainly. He's not well, and I felt sorry for him. You felt sorry for him? You never felt sorry for me. He looks twice as healthy as I do. Harry, I don't like your attitude, and I'm not going to be cross-examined by you. Well, you're not, eh? Well, since we're practically engaged... We're I... not engaged, and if you insist upon acting silly, good night. Meryl E. What did I tell you? Why aren't you asleep? Sleep? How can a guy sleep with that goon parading right over my head? <laughs> I'm sorry. Don't be sorry. Dames, hogwash. Oh. Ronnie, sleep well? Fine. Thanks to you for sending me to bed so early. Good. I gotta meet Dutchie. <laughs> Morning, Miss Norris. Morning, lad. Take a look at this. It ought to make you feel good. I wish they'd give us the real truth and not propaganda. I don't believe I understand you, Cheever. This country demands the truth of its press, as your people do. Mr. Norris, I've been in this war too long to be able to accept these yarns blindly. They love us into a spirit of false complacency. And whether you like it or not, Germany's terribly strong. She'll never surrender. If you could have seen Germany's might as I have, you'd realize that those stories are highly exaggerated. You shouldn't get so worked up. You're not strong enough yet. I guess it's my nerves. Please forgive me. Sometimes I take this war too seriously. Well, I've got to get to work. Goodbye, dear. See you later. I shouldn't say those things. Soldiers? Prisoners of war from the internment camp. Going to work on farms nearby. They forced them to work. I don't think so. They get 80 cents a day. Aren't they dangerous? Mrs. Crocker says they're not. Some of them work at her farm. She says they're no trouble at all. How interesting. I'll be back in a minute with your coffee. Hello, Rangers. Hi. Close to Cheever. Hi, Dutchie. That's a fine gun. Yeah, ain't it? Terry bought it for me. Army issue? No, nah, bought it at Schultz's. Sure, my dad gave me a discount. He has lots of guns. Real ones, too. 
May I have a look at it? How far is the cracker farm from here? Oh, about a mile down the road in the wet of town. See what happens to Cheever's cart? Have you seen Mary Lee around? Sure, she's over there getting the car out to go to the hospital. Fine shooting gun. What'd you do that for? That's only a bird. I hate him. Poor little bird. It's alive, Willie. Go get my Boy Scout kit. We'll give it first aid. Okay, Willie. Oh, you startled me. <laughs> Did I? Oh, you forgot a spot there. <laughs> Did you finish breakfast already? Quite, thank you. I say, do you mind if I ride to the hospital with you? I'd like to have the doctor have a look at this arm of mine again. Why, well, certainly. But uh, I'm afraid I'll have to go on duty. Oh, I'll find my way home. <sighs> well, do you think you're strong enough? You haven't been out alone, you know. I'm feeling wonderful. Besides, I'd like to look the town over a bit. All right. I'll be ready in a minute. Mary Lee, you're lovely. Very lovely. Oh, gorgeous. Am I flattered? Hello, Terry. Hello, Hunter. How are you? Mr. Cheever asked me to stop here. That's right, old man. I was hoping to find out if any of them were on my ship. I'm trying to trace a friend of mine, an American MP named Ellis, who was on board when we were torpedoed. I'm sorry, Mr. Cheever. Speaking to prisoners is verboten. It requires a written order, and I'm not the guy that can give it to you. Oh, I see. Uh, mind if I have a bit of water? No, I'm all against that. Thank you. What's the matter, honey? Music lessons go sour on you? Last night it was Ronnie, today it's Mr. Cheever. Drowned, you lying pig. I swear I didn't lie. It's a miracle. He has done it. He's done what? 
But he told me on the raft when he took the English uniform. What some teufel are you raving about? Richter's plan. He said it would not fail. Evidently it hasn't. For him. What do you intend to do? I'll let you know in due time. My friend. What can I do for you? It's a jolly fine collection. Oh, yes. We sell lots of guns. There's good hunting in this section. Oh, you must be Mr. Cheever, who is staying at the Norris. My little boy has told me about you. Your little boy? Yes. They call him Dutchy. Oh, yes. Yes, of course. <laughs> These nicknames. Every American boy has to have a nickname. <laughs> You're not Dutch, are you? I was born in Germany. Do you have ammunition for these guns? Yes, of course. But if you want to go hunting, I loan your gun. Oh, no, no, no. I was just thinking, uh, I mean, isn't it a bit strange for a German to keep a large stock of guns and ammunition in an alien country? My friend. I am an American. A German-American? An American. There is no hyphen. One is either an American or is something else. No offense, no offense. How oh, about that hunting? I'd like to take a shot at it. All right. This covers the local territory pretty well, eh? And in fine detail, too. Though that one covers the whole state. You don't want that, I guess. Might as well take them both. No charge for the max. Just sink a German submarine for me, yes? I shall remember that you asked that especially. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Cheever, don't come soon. We'll go find him. What's the matter, Cheever? See a ghost? Oh, Hunter. <laughs> You startled me, old boy. <clears throat> What's going on there? You'll find out. Hello, Shaver. We've been looking for you. We've been having an informal meeting between the auxiliary police and the local law enforcement authorities. The boys want to hash over post-war problems. What do you want of me? Well, Sam Norris tells us you've had quite a lot of experience with these here Nazi prisoners. We got the idea you might be able to tell us something about them. Ah, that's a waste of time. To me, gentlemen, there are only two kinds of people in Germany. Germans and Nazis. And as far as I'm concerned, the only good Nazi is a dead Nazi. Well, that's a little... <laughs> we don't have to argue about it out here, gentlemen. Let's go inside. Come on, yes, come, come on, in. mother. All right, Bill. Was that an important message you had for me? Now, we men have got to stick together, don't we, Terry? That's right, Bill. This telegram came for you. For me? Mm-hmm. You mind?
I uh, already know about it. Oh. I see. And I suggest that you plan on leaving as soon as possible. Cheever, we're we waiting for you. And that's the way the Nazis think. Therefore, they will never surrender unconditionally. But surely we should try to re-educate them. Mrs. Norris, the only way to educate a Nazi is to kill him. Excuse me, please. <clears throat> Hello? Yes, he's here. Just a minute, please. The sheriff, it's for you. But I feel so strongly that it's hostile. Hello? Yeah, this is he. What's that again? You don't say. This way, huh? Okay, I'll get busy right away. Well, folks, that was the Provo Marshal's office. One of those critters from the prison camp is on the loose. I was sent by Herr Lütke. You saw him. Mm. He sent you out to spy on me, eh? Oh, no. No, Herr Corporal. I told him about your plan, and he wants to know what you have accomplished. I'm not accountable to him. But you are, Herr Corporal. He is our Gruppenführer. Yes, I know. I've had dealings with him before. Very well. You can tell him that everything has gone wrong for the moment. I'm supposed to report to the British Consul to be shipped back to England. But you will not go. Of course not. Krause, do you remember what I told you on the life raft? It's about releasing our men and supplying them with firearms. My plan can't fail. Now, tomorrow night, when everyone has gone to the concert, I... Get out in the barn and stay out of sight. Your wall. They won't be home for hours. Come on, don't be a scare cat. Gee, I wish we would have went to that concert. What are we tiptoeing for? There ain't nobody home but us. Quit pushing, Dutchie. I don't like this. Besides, what kind of evidence are we looking for? How do I know? We gotta search the place. Slow down, Marley. We're coming to the barricade. Hi, Sarge. Haven't seen one of your pets on the loose, have you? Don't talk shop, Pete. I'm on a pass. We're going to Red Cross benefit. Haven't you found that guy yet? No, not yet, but we will. We got the district sewed up tight. <laughs> OK, boys, let him through. Sorry, I burned your hand. <laughs> so you did. 
Forget it, old man. Let's go. Uh, if you don't mind, I think I'll just wait out here until it's time for Mary Lee's recital. Well, it'll be at least 45 minutes. Righto. That was a nasty burn you gave him. I think he's faking with that arm, and I wanted to make sure. Why do you say that? Willie told me he saw what happened in the garage. Willie? Yes, and he's sure that Cheever used his right arm when he embraced you. I think we'd better go in. Operator, I'd like the British consul in Norfolk, Mr. McDowell. I don't know whether he'll be at his desk or not, but it's very important for you to find him for me. Yes. This number? Uh, Midvale, 4871. Thank you. Guns unloaded quickly. Hide him in the hay. I'm going to my room. I'll be right back. Yeah, Herr Richter.
things up. Let's get out of here. Hidden? Yeah. Good. Stay out of sight. Yeah, I will wait. Sieg heil. Who's that guy, Willie? I don't know. Let's see what he's up to. Maybe we better not, Willie. Aw, oh, heck of a commando you are. See that this guy doesn't get away. Gee, we'll be heroes. I don't want to be a hero. I just want to get out of this place. All right, all right. Now take this to Pop and for Pete's sakes, hurry. Okay, Willie. This is Sergeant Hunter speaking. Mr. McDowell? Oh, you did. That's fine. Help, help! We found the Nazi! We found him! We found him! Help, help! We found the Nazi! We found the Nazi! We found him! We found him! Willie's watching him in the barn! We gotta hurry! We gotta hurry! Sir, I'll be expecting you. Oh, pardon me, Mr. McDowell. What's going on in there? Dutch and Willie found the Nazi in the Norris barn. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. I'll have to call you back. Yes, sir. Dutch found this in the barn. We've got to do something about it, Willie. Well, that's prison issue, all right. Let's go. Cheever's gone, and so is the car. Here, Terry, take mine. Thanks, George. We'll pick up some men in the barricade.
Where's Willie? He's all right. He's in there. He just fainted. There's your prisoner. you got here so fast, Cheever? Well, I was just going inside to listen to Mary Lee when little Dutchie came up screaming about Willie being in danger. So I took the car and came here as fast as I could. Thanks. Where'd you get that gun? It's uh, Mr. Norris's. He showed it to me the other night, and I knew where he kept it. Say, why do you question me that way, Hunter? I have to make a complete report. Krauser was a prisoner of war. How's Willie? He'll be all right. Cheever, I'll be forever grateful. <laughs> Don't mention it, Mr. Right. Norris. I... Your right arm, you're using it. Why, I, I, I never realized. Say, I must have driven the car using both hands. Must have been the excitement. Excitement, nothing. He was here just a little while ago. Just before Willie and me caught the Nazi. Dutchie's right. You had forgotten the musical score I'd marked, so I came back to get it for you. This whole business has quite upset me, so if you don't mind, I think I'll go up to my room and lie down. Good night. Good night. I think we've all done him an injustice. Rector, I should come and grab a couple of stars. What are you talking about? You know I'm Ronald Cheever. It isn't the way I heard it. The British consul sent us the picture of the real Cheever. You're gonna have a tough time explaining that, Nazi. Now what about these guns, Sarge? Yeah. Very well. Oh, I am Karl Richter. I'm a prisoner of war, and I demand to be treated as such. You will. You know, Hunter, I always considered you rather stupid. Never thought you'd find out who I was. I didn't. It was our little commando. In a place called England. The trouble with you Nazis is you always have to have a plan. When that misfires, you're lost. Now, come on, let's go. Take over. What do you think will happen to Richter? Will he be shot? We won't know until he gets here. Ich verstehe die ganze Sache nicht. Ich habe nichts. Maul halten! Corporal Richter ist ein Coward und ein Traitor zu der Reich. How can you know that? Because I know him better than any one of you. You soft-bellied Austrian swine. Perhaps he had to do what he did. If you're referring to Krause, for him I care nothing. He served his purpose. But that weakling Richter. <laughs> Well, what are they going to do to you? Did they torture you? No, nothing like that. Why did you send Kraus out to contact me? You dare question my judgment? I do when it is stupid, and it always is. Oh, go on. My plan would have been successful if you hadn't interfered. Then you admit you failed. I admit nothing. I told you several you times. You know the penalty for failure for a soldier of the Reich? Yes, I do. We've all failed. That's why we are here. I think Richter is right. 
We are prisoners of war and out of it. And for that, thank God. You yes. yes. Quiet! You'll realize you face a firing squad for talking treason? Treason against whom? The Gestapo? You sneaking Prussian scum. I know. <laughs> Now, what's this all about? You know we don't tolerate any fighting here. Hey, Lieutenant, it is the fault of these arrogant Nazi Prussians. We Austrians do not want to be in the same barracks with them. All right, Lutka. All right, you men. Those who want to go with him, line up at the door. Well, Richter, what about you? Come on, Richter. Join us. You know that Hitler and these Nazis are finished. All right, men. March. Your decision to join us didn't fool me. You're still not a Nazi. You're not a German. You're not even a good soldier. You'd be better off dead. That you left me to die like a dog at ants you to save your own worthless skin was one thing. But to have failed to fear. I've not failed my fear. That you will find out when you're back in Germany, facing a firing squad. I'm not going back. There's no more Germany for me. I will not live in a world we have failed to conquer. Banana oil.